This is lecture outline nine. Hope everybody's staying healthy out there. Uh, we're gonna do Roman numerals two and three, uh, since Roman numeral two will be very short. In fact, it's just one page. Roman numeral two is about valence electrons. Those are electrons with the largest value of the principal energy level, where, of course, that's N. Uh, electrons that are important in chemical bonding, as we will see, and this is all building to understanding where the electrons are, and then next lecture outline we'll talk about how to incorporate electrons into bonds. For the nitrogen atom, it's element number seven. There are seven electrons. I have four electrons, two P, three. The valence electrons, are going to be electrons with the largest value of the principal energy level. That's n equals two, and there are five valence electrons. For the nickel atom, nickel, element number 28, same first 18, ele well, so let's see, 28 electrons. Same first 18 electrons as argon, then 4s2, 3d8. That means that for uh, the highest value of n is n equals 4, and there are two valence electrons. Bromine atom, I'll let that be a companion problem. All other electrons in the atom are called core electrons. They generally don't participate in bonding, so like generally, who cares? Uh, well, uh, of course we do on some level, but we are moving towards talking about bonding specifically, and we will be almost always interested in the valence electrons. Speaking of valence electrons, if you look at the periodic table, you can figure out that everything in group one will have one valence electron, group two, We'll have two valence electrons, uh, three, well, whether it's 13 or three, this group has three valence electrons, all the way over to uh, group 18, which has just the number eight valence electrons, um, or so eight uh, or the single digit splice. So oxygen, six valence electrons. Nitrogen, as we just noted, five valence electrons. You will always have a periodic table when you take chemistry exams, specifically I know with me, and so anything you can remember by looking at this periodic table, get the thumbs up. Roman numeral three is gonna be about atomic radius. First thing I wanna say is that there are a number of ways of thinking about a, an atom's radius, or radii, radius. Um, you can think of what's called the metallic radius, you can think of a covalent radius, or you can think of what's called the van der Waals radius. And all of these will be uh, oftentimes similar and yet somehow different uh, because each of the positions of the positive and negative charges will be slightly different depending upon their environment in a bond, in a metal, uh, or for the van der Waals radius when it's adjacent to another atom. So we're not gonna define radius specifically. We are gonna talk about trends in radius though. And uh, there are two general trends that you have to know. One is that radius increases down the same group. And just a refresher, a group is uh, a column in the periodic table. Down the same group, our example is gonna be helium and neon. They're in the noble gas group. If we look at Oh, radius increases down the same group because N increases. And as we've seen in previous lecture outlines, as N increases, the size of the atom increases. So if we look at helium with an electron configuration of 1s2 and neon with 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, N equals two, N equals one, and N equals two is bigger than N equals one. So 
So neon is bigger than helium. That works down the same group, regardless of what group it is. So lithium, so sodium is bigger than lithium, potassium is bigger than sodium, gallium is bigger than aluminum. Radius increases from a uh, typo from uh right to left across the same period. I apologize for that typo. Increases from right to left. That means as you go this way to the left, radius increases. Because the effective nuclear charge decreases. which means there is less nuclear charge pulling the electrons towards the nucleus. Okay, so what that means, uh, we'll do an example of lithium versus neon. Neon and lithium are in the same period, or the same row of the periodic table. We think about lithium with three electrons, and neon with 10 electrons. And it's tempting to say that neon should be bigger. It is smaller in this case, lithium is bigger. Doing electron configurations, we have 1s2, 2s1 for lithium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 for neon. So they are in the same period and they have the same largest value of n. So now let's talk about uh, nuclear charge or effective nuclear charge. To do that, I'll draw pictures of the atoms. Now, uh, I know what the answer is going to be. Neon is smaller, so n equals 1 and n equal 2 will both be smaller. Which means that neon will be a smaller atom. Now, let's look at this. Each x represents an electron. I know they're moving very fast about the nucleus, but let's, uh, this is a schematic picture. We have in n equals one, two electrons, in n equals two, one electron there. Uh, then for so two electrons in n equals one, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight electrons flying around the n equals two, so that includes the s and p electrons flying around in their orbitals. Um, but remember, they're in the same general space because they're all in n equals two, and two s and two p orbitals end at the same distance from the nucleus. All right, so uh, this electron feels the pull of the plus three nucleus. Each of these electrons feels the pull of a plus 10 nucleus because there are 10 protons and three protons. So in a very real way, these electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus by the larger positive charge. 
That is the straight up nuclear charge. Now effective nuclear charge takes account for the fact that even though there's a plus three nucleus, there are two electrons that are between the 2s1 electron or any of the two n equals two electrons and the nucleus. So we're gonna subtract two and this is a rough calculation, but it gives you a good idea of what the effective nuclear charge will be. Minus two for shielding uh, uh, by the 1s electrons. And by shielding, I mean that you're placing a negative charge between the nucleus and the 2s electrons it's shield so it sees uh, less of that charge because there's intervening negative charge. And lithium ends up with a plus one effective nuclear charge. Doing a similar calculation for neon, we have a plus 10 nucleus, still only minus two for shielding of the 1s electrons, or by the 1s electrons. And we get a plus eight effective nuclear charge. That larger effective nuclear charge pulls each of these electrons closer to the nucleus, making neon a smaller atom than lithium, even though it has more electrons. Now what about the transition metals? Turns out they're all approximately the same size. We can look at titanium versus iron. Titanium has 22 electrons. Uh, iron has 26 electrons. Writing them with noble gas cores, we have the first 18 electrons for argon. 4s2, 3d2. Similarly, we have 4s2, 3d6 for the iron atom. Let's do the effective nuclear charge calculation for these. Well, I guess first let's note they both have two valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the electrons that are the farthest from the nucleus. They will define the size. This time we will do uh, all of the other electrons, including the d electrons in n equals three, as core electrons. Core electrons meaning between the nucleus and the n equals four electrons. So, for titanium, plus 22 nucleus, uh, there are minus 20 shielding electrons. plus two effective nuclear charge. For iron, plus 26 nucleus, now including the 3d6, minus 24 shielding electrons. the same plus two effective nuclear charge. Now there are small variations in the radius uh, and the size of the transition metals, but that is because this is a simplification of the process, of, uh, but it is a reasonably good approximation.